you have done so much mixing and matching on that back end. Has this been the most, I don't want to use the word trying, uh, experience you've gone through as a DB coach? Ooh, uh, I've been in some sticky situations, I think, <laughs> over the years, but um, you know, I'm blessed. I got a bunch of good players in my room, um, barring even a talent. I mean, I got a bunch of guys that show up every single day and want to go to work, and whoever's going to go out there, uh, we trust that they're going to go out there and play good. So, you know, injuries are part of the game. They happen no matter where you are. Everybody in the league's dealing with it, and um, so we'll keep dealing with it as long as we've got to. But I like, I like. I like the way that everybody's responded. We've had some guys play some different positions, and they've all stepped up and done a good job. So we'll keep going. A couple of weeks ago, Malcolm Jenkins told me that he was really impressed with the way Avante Maddox has, has progressed in the back end in terms of calling it. Give me your breakdown of how quickly he's come. Yeah. Um, you know, when you get forced into a situation like that, I mean, he's the guy, obviously, you're talking about going into different spots. Um, really, really proud of the kid. Um, he's done a good job. And I would say this. He, is, uh, he has not been perfect in any game he's been back there or whatever position he's been playing, but um, he learns from every week and he gets better every single week. So as we go forward, we'd expect nothing less from that as well. Um, he had a couple plays in the game in London that were uh, not perfect, um, but then he goes out the next series and he finds a way to make a play. So. Uh, we, I would expect nothing less from him going forward, what no is matter what told? position he plays. What can you tell us about the new guy, Nick Craven? And, and, you know, um, well, well, I would say this. I'll tell you more after he's here. Um, <laughs> I look forward to meeting him and uh, getting him caught up. I mean, we've got to get him caught up quick here. So um, he's obviously played a lot of nickel snaps in, uh, in his time in the league. So um, we'll get him caught up, and then uh, we'll see how that goes here going forward. What does Amari Cooper add to that Cowboys offense? <laughs> um, I think, I oh mean, the guy's obviously a dynamic player. He's a great route runner. He's got great hands, radius to catch it wherever the ball's thrown at him. He's got the whole route tree. He's explosive. I mean, I could, I think I could list everything that there is about a wideout. He's got it. So we'll have our hands full there, um, and then we'll see what goes. But he's obviously a good player. When, a good player. when you talk about trying to defend like a kid like Amari, you look at the hesitation move he has in this direction, similar to Odell Beckham. How do you coach that to defend that? Yeah, I mean you got to rely. I mean you know what I'm going to say to that. I mean you got to you got to rely on the technique first of all. Obviously you got to play to the to the scheme, and then whatever that's going to be, then you got to rely on your technique. Starts with great eye discipline, and then it starts with then it goes. The, the next thing would be then everything else, having your feet underneath you and be able to stay on your feet. Um, change direction, find the ball if they throw it to him, all that stuff that goes into it. I mean, he's a, he's a tough cover, uh, and he's going to be a tough cover, so we got our hands full there. Corey, the defense overall hasn't created the takeaway that it created last season. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you can do about that? Is it just the way things go? I think it's a little bit the way things go. I think we have left a bunch out there, um, so sometimes you get some opportunities to make them. you got to make them. So I think we've missed a few of those, um, and then I think the other thing goes to Maybe not just as many opportunities as we had last year. Um, you know, I don't know if there's anything you can do about it. I mean, what you can't do is you can't start as a player in any position. Start like, hey, I want to make a play here, and then yeah, you can, there's, you can't do that. I mean, you got to do your job, and if the play comes to you, then we got to make it. And obviously, we got one there last weekend with Avante on that tackle, and then Malcolm scooping that ball up obviously helped us in the game. Um, so we just got to hopefully we can just keep trending in that direction. But that's about it. What did you see from uh, Rasul with him getting in there uh, last week? Uh, yeah, he, he was good. Um, had an opportunity to make a couple plays there in the flat. Um, got a little sideways on the ball. They threw to the tight end up the sideline there. Uh, he could have been better there. Avante really could have helped him on that play as well. Um, but, you know, he's, he's relished that role for us. Obviously, it would probably be a little bit different for him now with him up. Um, we'll see what happens here with Jalen. But um, he could see, obviously, some more time. But, I mean, I think we went 8-1 and one with him out there last year. I would expect nothing different for him to come in, do his job, and play really good for us. I mean, if that wasn't the expectation, we wouldn't put him out there. So, um, But he's done a good job. Limited snaps. Obviously, he played more last week or two weeks ago now, I guess, than he has all year. But, I mean, the guy is ready. He comes to practice every single day, does everything that's asked for him in the meeting, in practice. And then, you know, I think I've said this before. I mean, I turn around, and before I can even tell him to go in, he's already out there for whoever goes down. So corner safety, whatever spot it's going to be. So um, he, uh, I expect him to be ready.
Make if he, go, if he goes in there. I'm sorry, with Dexter McDougal release, do you expect to have Sidney Jones back this week? Um, well, I, I, can't, I, I don't know that yet. Um, I mean, all those guys, him, Jalen, all week to week here. So we'll see what happens here as we go through practice on tomorrow and then through the week. Um, Who's your nickel corner if you don't have Sidney Jones? Well, we'll figure that out as well. <laughs> we'll find out what happens here this week. I mean, obviously the injuries, I'm not going to comment on those. I have no idea until they tell me what it's going to be. So. Um, whoever's out there, I know this, they're going to be out there and they're going to have to play good for us, obviously, with this team. Uh, well, that number 11 is a pretty good player. When you talk about outside corners, if you go back to last year, before Ronald got hurt, he was playing the left side. Then Jalen moved over and stayed there. Mm -hmm. uh, when things happened last week, Ron went back to the left side, Rasul played on the right side. Mm -hmm. how, how much does that make a difference for those guys? And is it just a comfort factor? Yeah, I, th I think uh, I think for Ron, for Ron at that point when Jalen went out um, and for Rasul coming in, I mean, Rasul can play either side, um, and I don't think it really matters. Um, when Jalen went down and then uh, Darby going over to the other side, Rasul, I think, has taken most of his snaps for Darb on the right this year and the few times that he's gone out there. Mm -hmm. So we just put Rasul in the spot that he's been at most of the time this year. Um, but I would have no problem with either one of those guys playing either side. I don't think it matters. I think there used to be a the left corner was the. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't. I haven't played a quarterback right in this hand. league that couldn't yeah. throw the ball to the right side of the defense. So, I don't think it really matters. Okay. okay. What have you seen from teams uh, in relation to going at Darby? Is, you know, less of it as the week has gone on. Um, no, I, mean, I would. Th I would think. I couldn't. I couldn't actually give you a stat on how many times he's got it versus Jalen or or um, or uh, Rasul. I guess going back to last week, I think it comes down to where the ball is and the formation that's going to get presented, um, and then what the play call is. Um, obviously, Darby's done a good job for us this year. He's played good, and then you'd have to ask the offensive players or the offensive coaches on that. You know, if they don't want to throw the ball to him or not. But I know this: when he gets the ball thrown at him, he's been sticky all year, and he's done a good job for us so far. We got a long way to go. What have you done specifically to improve his game? Um, yeah, I think I said this in the off season a couple times. I think I think when you come in, and I'm not going to say just to our room, but when you come into a new place like you did last year at the beginning of training camp, I mean, take his talent. Obviously, he's a talented player, but there is a vibe and there's a there's a fit that you have to find your place in in a room, um, in our room too, and I think. Having gone through the year, injured or not injured, but having gone through the year and then coming back in the spring, I think there was just a, a he's just way more comfortable in on this team. And I think for a player, that mindset, when you know, like, all right, I, I belong here, I fit in here, um, I know what's expected of me, um, I think that has definitely changed him um, from that mindset. Not skill-wise or any of that, I just think he's just, when he came back in the spring at OTAs from day one, Phase one, um, he just seemed like a different guy that way. I don't think anything's changed in, the, in, his, in his play from his physical aspect or anything like that. Um, he's been a physical player for us since he's been here. Um, he's been a good cover guy. So, thank you, Corey. Yep, thank you, it. Corey. How, di it. how difficult is it to keep up a good level of communication with the defensive backs with so many guys rotating different positions? Um, yeah. Goes back to a lot of practice, you know. Um, they get all those reps during the week, and it's obviously their job. That's why you do that stuff to put guys in there and to get comfortable. And when you put somebody back there, they got to earn everybody else's trust. So when they say something, then they know that everybody else knows that they know what they're talking about. So, and that's just part of practice. And, and obviously, the more reps you can get back there, the better. And to fluid transition, even in the game, if someone goes down and someone has to go in a different position. Even. Yeah, you hope so. Yeah. And I would go back, to, and then that goes back to training. It's a little bit different than if you're just saying it in the classroom. I mean, we're really demanding in our meeting room. So I put all those guys through all those scenarios, whether on their practice squad or whether they're a backup. So those guys have all been through that scenario. And then the goal, obviously, is when they get out there, at one point, every point they get out there, that they can, they can communicate and um, be relied on to make it work. So yeah. I know this has been talked about a lot, but I was watching the games over the weekend with mm -hmm. the guys not playing, and it just stood out to me how much Teams are coming back from 21 down and scoring touchdowns. And it seems like defense is really at a low point <laughs> in the league in terms of, you know, getting stops. And is it because the offenses are so good, or is it the rules? 
what do you, is it? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if I can answer that less. I mean, yeah. obviously the points are obviously up. There's no, there's no hiding that. Um, I think the ball is being thrown around the, around the field a lot more than it has in the past. I do know this for in the two games that we, we gave up the lead. Um, I mean, last time I checked, you got to play 60 minutes. And I don't care if they're running it or if they're throwing it. You got to play 60 minutes. You can't play 48. You can't play 50. You got to play all 60. So, um, regardless of how they're doing it, you know, that's our job to go out there and find a way to get a stop there when we need to get a stop. So, in the, in the month since Maddox moved to safety, where's the most development come? I would probably go to the actual just the comfort and the communication aspect of it. Um, and then once you get the communication down and you know what you're doing first and you're in the right spot, then the next movement or the next growth is then backpedaling and breaking on the ball and breaking with efficient angles so that you're coming out downhill and not sideways and wasting steps back there. So um, the communication part from the first game to the last game this weekend has gotten a lot better, and it's going to. I mean, it's, got, I mean, it's been almost – it hasn't been – yeah, it's been, it's been on-the-job training for him a little bit. Um, and we wouldn't have we wouldn't have put him back there if we didn't think he could do that. You know? Is it going better than we anticipated? Um, it's going about as as well as I anticipated. I mean, I've from I when mean, I said this, I think last time. I mean, I've um, I've trusted the kid since he's been here. Um, he's wired exactly the way we want him to be wired, and uh, you know he shows up every single day with a mindset like, hey, I'll do anything I can to help this team, and that's the way he goes about his work. So when he gets in the game. Um, he's out there doing the best he can now. Again, he hasn't been absolutely perfect back there, but um, I, I definitely feel like every time he goes out there, when he gets off the field, he is better. And we would expect nothing going forward. It should be the same thing. The forced fumble the other day, mm -hmm. was was he applying a coaching point, or is that just his instinct? Yeah, that's just a good sound tackle right there, which I think is what, going back to why him back there, because that's, I mean, it was, Rodney McLeod-esque coming out of the post and a good low tackle. He didn't come up short. He didn't leave his feet too early. Went right through the guy's waist. Ends up getting the guy on the ground. Because um, if you don't do that and you don't come out of there with a good angle, then you miss that guy. And all of a sudden, that guy's up the sideline. And on that play, it might have been a touchdown. So um, I think he was doing exactly what he's – I don't know if I'm not going to take the credit for that. But um, that was a clinic tackle. Yeah. Did you impress you more that or the third and one stop that he made earlier? Um, I don't know if either one of them impressed me very much. I'd probably go with the third and one stop because that was, those are that's uh, that's loud in there on third and one. Um, they had big people on the field and um, he had to come off the edge and get that the guy on the ground. But uh, that's a great tackle by him right there too. Yeah. More. Um, you know what? Uh, that's a great question. Um, his his role right now was at safety, so I'd leave him there. Um, I'm not going to project where he's going to play. Uh, I think what what's going to happen though, it's it's going to be tough to say, all right, he's going to have to move here or move there because the more you play back there, obviously, then you know it's the old adage: the more you can do, the more value you're going to have for a team. So I think he's just going to open up, you know, he's going to open up more options for him in the future, whether it's here or anywhere else. But. Um, I think right now we're blessed to have him. So, it, you know, barring knock on wood, there's no more injuries. The guy can go and play almost any spot we got. We're not going to put were, him in the box. But. When you guys were scouting him before the draft, I mm -hmm. mean, how much conversation was there about, you know, that's another option with him? Uh, as, as far as playing safety? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if that even came up, to be honest yeah. with you. Um, when you put the kid's tape on, though, I mean, he stood out on the tape as far as playing full speed, mm -hmm. playing with effort. The kid was tough. He was physical. He could cover, change direction. Um, and I would say I don't think that – I don't remember having a, a conversation about him playing safety. Right. And then what ends up happening is once you get the guy in your building and then you go through it and you get the opportunity to watch him learn and grow through OTAs and training camp through the beginning of the season, mm -hmm. then your eyes become, oh, wait, hold on, maybe he could do this. Um, so, uh, I don't think that was a conversation though before. Yeah. He obviously wants to do whatever he can uh, he can do to be on the field as a rookie. But has he expressed any kind of long-term desire to be at a certain position? No. 
He's just worried about beating the Cowboys right now. That's all he's worried about. Jim was saying once everybody started going to 11 personnel, that's when he was like, we got to just cross train everybody, safeties yeah. and corners. Uh, what about you? When did you kind of think, all right, th this is probably kind of the way the league's going and this is a good idea? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say probably, yeah, I guess maybe right when I got into the league, which would have been 04, there was probably a little bit more two back on first and second down, a little bit. Uh, but I would say of the 15, probably 12 of them have been trending that way. So we've been in that business for the most of my for the most of my career in this league. Obviously, Jim's got a lot more experience than I do, but um, we've been playing nickel defense for a majority of our snaps for the last 10 years. So obviously, the more guys can do, and the more you know, it, I think this is a perfect example when you have guys that can come down when guys get hurt and fill in different spots. Obviously, it's better. And you're not limiting yourself, then obviously you've got to go around and try to find other players that fit your scheme when you have them in your room because they know what you're doing. Okay. If I can ask you, we, we got to cut them loose. Okay. Uh, about a, a player at a different position, you've prepared for Golden Tate many times throughout your career. What kind of challenge does he present to secondaries? I'm glad he's here. <laughs> um, Saw him in the Super Bowl, didn't you? We did, yeah. I mean, I, he's. The thing that uh, sticks out in my mind is just toughness. He's a good route runner, obviously plays in the slot all the time. Um, he's a good player. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to be in the business of, of scouting him or talking. I'm just, I'm really glad he's here. Yeah.